Guess who the biggest employer in America is? Well, going away, it's the U.S. government. And the government hires even more workers through the companies that it awards contracts to. But there's a new report out from our friends over at Demos that says that's not necessarily all good news, especially for those who make near poverty level incomes. Pay rates that in some cases let those same companies give huge rewards to the execs while not much for those that are actually doing the work. Now, Andrew spoke yesterday with one of the authors of that report, Demos's Amy Trapp. Amy, how many low-wage workers are we talking about, and what kind of economic pressures are these jobs placing on them? Well, Andrew, we were surprised to find that it's really, it's nearly 2 million low-wage workers making $12 an hour or less that really have their jobs funded and supported by the federal government. And what's the bigger concern here, that it's hard for them to make ends meet because they're getting low wages through these federally backed jobs, or that we're creating inequality because CEOs are still being paid uh, so much? Well, I think the, the biggest concern really is that it is so hard on low-wage workers. These are people who are working on behalf of America. They're doing jobs that we have decided are worthy of public funding, of our taxpayer dollars, and yet we're, they're being treated on the job in a very un-American way. Now, I do think the thing about CEOs, the, the very high CEO pay rate that we're reimbursing, that's a cause for concern, too, because that's our money. That's our contracting money, and it shows the way that we as taxpayers are fueling inequality. Those low-wage jobs, the, the two million that you focused on, that facilitates, that enables CEOs of some of these companies to, to still make an arm and a leg from the federal contracts? Well, the, so we, the taxpayers, have ordered this work in some way. We've, we, um, it's the federal government that's contracting with people and working with people um, who clean federal office buildings, who are funded by Medicaid or Medicare. And um, we allow these contracts, we agree to these contracts, um, even though the wages paid to workers are very low and the wages, the compensation offered to CEOs is very high. And we have not set a standard that says that's unacceptable. You know, I can already hear people at home who are watching this interview and thinking, if we raise how much we pay individual workers, even through these federal contracts, that's going to make the price of the contract higher. That means more tax dollars to get every little thing done. What, what's your response to that argument? Yeah, well, luckily, this model has been tried before. More than 100 cities, counties, and states, um, you know, primarily cities and counties across the country, have, um, have living wage ordinances. And many of them have been around for years. And these ordinances do things like say, hey, our city is not going to write contracts and do business with companies that are paying wages below a certain rate. And um, then when you look at the outcomes of that, they do raise wages, they do not harm job growth, and in fact, costs to the city that has an ordinance like this do not increase substantially. And that's partly because the companies find that their employees, when they're better paid, they're more productive and they have less turnover. I know unions have not been very popular, especially among conservatives, the last few years, but are these jobs union eligible? Are they union jobs? Would that help? That would certainly help. And, and some of these are union jobs. The union jobs tend to be the better paid jobs. Um, that's why they're better paid, right? But, um, you know, any job in America is union eligible. We all have the right to organize, and if workers did organize into unions, that would raise pay. So what's the solution here, a minimum wage for anybody who gets a job via a federal contract? Well, it goes beyond contracting. There are a wide range of um, different ways in which the federal government fuels this low-wage workforce. But what we would like to see is for President Obama to sign an executive order which would raise wages for companies that do business with the federal government. All right, Amy Traub with Demos. Amy, thanks very much for a few minutes. Appreciate it. Thank you, Andrew. And that again, Andrew's conversation yesterday with Amy. All right, everybody, stay with us. We're going to wrap things up and this week up on RFL right after this break.